Today we're excited about the Ccam E2C camera and this is the first time we integrate with this brand. And the uh, Ccam is a 4K Ultra HD cinematic camera with the CMOS sensor of the micro four third size. And uh, it has also a quite nice dynamic range. We have between 13 and 15 stops of dynamic range on this in 10-bit color. So that's about the camera. I, I think when I look at it and I see it's powered over Ethernet, that's really nice. And for this type of form factor, it's, it's not too often that you see direct plug for Ethernet connectivity on them. But obviously that means we can control it. And what better to control it than a Skahoy RCP. So in this video, you'll also see why you want Skahoy RCPs in your OB truck or your master control room, in your shading bay. You want these units because they are so flexible. They can work with this camera, with a lot of other cameras, PDZ cameras, studio cameras, camcorders, cinematic cameras like from Ari, Panasonic, Canon, and so forth. Today is the C cam that we'll be looking at. Um, I, you could go check the data sheet for all the nice features it has, but it's one of those cameras that easily builds into uh, various uh, rigs that you imagine and you can connect it to external recorders. It also has internal SD card recording and all that stuff. But the focus of today is when you want to use this in a live production. So one of the limitations I would say that we currently have is that the lens we apply is probably not the, the long shot lens that you are going to choose for your cinematic production. It's a, a Lumix a Micro Four Third lens. It has uh, some control from the RCP, but in many cases with a completely manual lens not connected to the camera, you can also use the Skahoy RCP by having a separate set of control going to the lens outside of the camera. But that's a topic for another day. We will be looking at the RCP right here and see how it works with the camera. One of the main things from an RCP is really you can use the joystick, the iris joystick, to control the iris of the lens. So let's see how that is really working on the RCP. So I'm moving the iris joystick. Oh, you see also this uh, LED bar here is going to give you the, the strength indication. We also have the iris value as, as it's coming out of the camera. And in this case, we do not know Oh, maybe we have f-stops right here. Actually, we do. But the main thing that you'll be seeing and you'll be a little grumpy about maybe is the fact that this lens is stepping. But that's this lens. If you had a really nice broadcast lens, you would have absolutely smooth iris coming out of this camera. But today with that lens, no way. So uh, the iris is adjusted by the iris joystick. That's really the main thing that you want an RCP to do. We also have preview button here, or you can press the button on top of the joystick. In both cases, it will typically be linked by GPI out on the backside or an IP message to your video router to bring up the image of the camera on the screen in front of you. And also in return, you can take a GPI input or listen to messages on your network with TSL, for instance, to light up the LED bar you see right there. For this demonstration, I just light it up when I press the button. But as a part of the configuration you can do for an RCP like this, it's very easy to remap it to a message on the network instead. So that was the lower section here. Uh, iris value here, we have a shift key that uh, sometimes affect things like, for instance, you hold down shift if you want to actually power down the camera. You see that that is what's happening here. And uh, we have a stream button. There's a record on off. So you can actually from the RCP start recording on the memory card in the camera and you can stop it again like that. Inactivate button so that the panel, you, doesn't matter what you do here, it's inactive, you can activate it once again, and so on. So we want to take a look at the parameters in the camera we can control from the top part. And if we look at the top part of the RCP, we see that we have our display divided into eight tiles and they correspond to these eight encoder knobs. So that's very easy. We also have a number of buttons here. We have set them up to act as a menu selector. So currently we are in the exposure menu, but I can go to the white balance menu and you see settings in the displays and on the knobs related to white balance. If I go to image, you see it's related now to uh, image. And finally, in the tool sections, you find things like peaking, for instance. So these are the things that you uh, have in this menu. So let's go to exposure and see what we can do. First of all, and that's great news for those of you who like flexibility in either assessing the shutter speed in um, uh, hundreds of a second, in fractions of a second, or you can choose uh, the angle, the shutter angle from the knob here. So you see I'm, I'm changing the shutter angle, or I can go back to speed and change the shutter speed. 
So there you go. That's the two options we have from the camera. You can only have either one at a time. Now it doesn't matter that I'm changing the angle because it's blocked. And you can see that by the nice little icon in the display. So that's really nice. Uh, on the next one we have uh, for automatic exposure, we have either spot metering, average metering or sensor-based imaging uh, metering. There we have um, auto exposure freeze. We can lock and unlock uh, here. Uh, something called e-value. I gotta admit I'm not absolutely sure what this is. Could be compensation value of some sort. And then we have ISO and maximum ISO settings that you can adjust over here. The ISO setting is evident right away. If we go to the white balance we have a lot of different white balance settings. We have auto, incandescent, incandescent? Ah, that's the kind of word you always read but never pronounce. Um, okay, it's probably indoor white balance, right? Let's just put it that way. So that's indoor cloudy. That sounds like outdoor to me. We have uh, D10,000. I'm sure some of you guys are clever enough to know what that is. I'm sure I uh, should know. Fluorescent, so that's a different type of lamp we had back in the 80s, I think. And uh, why didn't people make something called LED light? Um, maybe because daylight is about the same color temperature uh, shade. How is that different from cloudy? I'm not sure. But these are all values coming out of the camera. It is really not me or my engineer's um, fantasy. It's the camera protocol. And that just goes to show that Skahoy devices are always seeking to implement the exact feature set of cameras, devices that we integrate with. So we'll go read through, we'll uh, faithfully implement the features that the engineers of the camera, in this case, put into the camera. So um, there you can see those things. But now the, the last two we have here, the manual white balance is adjustable by letting us set the Kelvin temperature. So very easy. We have some uh, a tint parameter we can use to, uh, to offset that a little bit. And uh, white balance priority based on white and ambience. I think that is available for some of the other modes as well. And then in expert mode, we get access to um, the, let's call this master white balance. I think that would be the abbreviation for red, green and blue. And these values are uh, changeable on these encoder knobs. So I can access them there for really fine control. Uh, one nice thing is you can see as I'm changing the mode of white balance here, uh, sometimes you see upgrades, uh, updates. So even though I'm now at an automatic mode, it is telling me what Kelvin temperature and uh, tint setting is actually being used at the moment right now. So I think that was a pretty nice array of white balance related parameters we saw right there. If we move on to image, you can see lots. You can also see brightness. We have contrast over here, some sharpness related parameters and saturation. Just to show you brightness, if I turn this knob, you see the image becomes brighter. So uh, I guess that's uh, a pretty nice way to maybe fine tune your, um, um, your, your brightness sense from the image. Obviously you would use the lens to do the main adjustment of light intake uh, by the iris handle here, but Brightness, contrast, saturation can be useful for many other things. So one of the things you see here is the LUT selection. And currently it's a Rec 709. If I change this, you'll see the camera is uh, just briefly disconnecting from the RCP to change over to C Lock 2. And that gives you this image you see right here. For whatever reason you want that, the flat LUT. I'll just move on to the next one to show you which options we are dealing with here. We have HLG. We have customized LUT. And let's see if there is even another option. It seems like we actually covered the whole range. So let's now just go back to the Rec 2, uh, 709. But you saw that we have access to the lot selection in the camera. The tools go um, for, through a lot of things. We have peaking, for instance, we can tur turn peaking on. And as we saw just before, it could be fun to just uh, increase the ISO a little bit so we can see the peaking. Um, that's, um, that's done right now. No, actually it's the zebra uh, stripes. I'm sorry about that. Now, the, the tools that will overlay zebra stripes peaking on the image and so on is one that we can disable and enable here. We actually broke that out on a button. So you see this button is doing exactly that, but it's actually the same thing as turning this knob up here. So in a sense, it represents the tradition of Skahoy where you find things on the knobs, but you can take certain of those things out and place on a button that gives you direct access. Now in this case, we basically have direct access to the overlays 
of the tools section on the image, as you can see right there. Um, so some of the tools that we have would be the peaking color. It could be um, uh, blue and um, white, orange. There's a number of options here. We uh, also have um, various modes we can select for autofocus and um, uh, manual focus. Uh, the tool that we are currently looking at would be the zebra stripes. Now we have it in monochrome if that is uh, useful for you guys. Uh, false color is another one and we can also entirely disable the whole thing. So let's do that for now and turn off all the tools right here. So um, in a sense that's basically what we wanted to show you how we can control all these things which are uniquely available for the Zcam E20C camera and brought out on the Skahoy RCP so you can actually use this camera in your live productions.